In this problem, we're being asked to write a proof that has to do with segment congruence. So segments mean these line segments down here, and congruence means uh, equal to or the same length. So we're told that EF equals GH. So this segment is equal to this segment. And we want to prove that EG, that's this segment, is equal to FH, so those two are the same length. When you're getting ready to write a proof, I think the first thing to do is just to walk through it in your own mind, not using necessarily the language of a formal proof, just so that you feel like you understand it first. So in this case, we've got these two segments that we know are equal, and we've got this third segment. And to get these other two segments that we want to prove are equal, we're really just adding that third segment to it. Um, so clearly, these two are going to be the same length. But how can we prove this? Well, let's start. I think a good place to start always is uh, with the given information. So let's start with our given. So I'll write the statement EF equals GH. And the reason here is just that this is given information. And uh, doesn't refer to any other line, so we don't need to fill that out. OK. Now, where can we go from here? Well, when you're dealing with line segments, sometimes a good thing to do is to break down the segments that you've got using what's called the segment addition property. So if we look at the segments we want to get to, the EG and the FH, we can list EG as EF plus FG. And this is segment addition, and really only refers to its own line. Let's uh, do the same thing for the second one. So we can say FH equals FG plus GH. Again, the reason is segment addition, and we don't need to refer to any lines. Let's move this out a little bit so we have some more room. Okay, Now, we've got those broken down. One of the cool things we can do here is some substitution. And you'll often see this in proofs. Um, so we have this line uh, in number one that says EF equals GH. So what I can do is I can use that to substitute uh, in this line number two. I can just put GH in that line. And what you'll notice is if I put GH right right here, I would have this line down here, the, the right side of it. So that means I could say that EG equals FH by substitution. But I have to do that in two steps. So let me do the first step where I'm just using line one and two to write this. So um, I'm going to say that EG equals, and instead of EF, I'm going to say GH. That's the information I get from this line number one. I can substitute GH in for EF plus FG. So this was substitution property. And it used lines 1 and 2. Now we're going to do one more substitution here. Now I've got EG equals GH plus FG, and FH equals FG plus GH. That's the same thing. So I can say EG equals FH. And look, this is what we wanted to prove. So we're there. That used substitution again. And the lines I used were 3 and 4. So this whole proof might have seemed just really obvious to you by looking at the figure. When we set out the proof here in geometric terms, we have to do it um, step by step, logically, mathematically. So what we said here is that these two little line segments equal each other. The two big line segments that we want to equal to each other, we broke down what they were made up of. And then we use this substitution from this first line to change one of them so that um, each side was equal to the other. And we could finally say that EG equals FH. So that is an example of a proof uh, about segment congruence.